Okay, so I just finished spray painting this face with some antique gold spray paint. I did a couple coats and let it dry for a while and then came back and did some touch-ups. And it's already masking some of the repair work I had to do where a few pieces cracked. Um, it wasn't a lot of damage. There was just tiny pieces that had to be repaired, which is why I decided not to glaze this piece because I wanted to be able to fix those rather than just try to hide them with the glaze. So once this dries... I'm going to use some paint pens to accentuate some of the detail work um, with, the, with the very thin coils and the slip trailing. And then the last step will be to antique it um, with some black India ink that's been watered down. And I did this on a cross that I'm going to show you, and it turned out really well. The cross has um, been covered in foil over hot glue and then antiqued. Um, with some gold and some black and eat inks. All right, so I have my jar here that I have sprayed with the antique gold uh, spray paint and let it dry. And now I'm gonna do some of these details with um, these paint pens that I have. So here are my paint pens. And um, I'm definitely gonna use red for the floral designs because that's one of the most popular colors that you'll see on a poeta. And then um, I have to decide whether I want to do a second color for the other details or if I want to do those in red as well. I'll probably do it all in red just because that's more traditional and so it'll invoke more of that memory. Um, and so that's what it's going to look like with the paint pen over it. I'm just doing the very top. I'm not trying to get around the little edges because I don't want to get it on the actual um, jar or any of the subtractive pieces. I only want to get it on these coiled pieces and then the slip work on it. Um, so there you go. That's what that looks like. And here is where the um, worst crack was. And you can see, you can hardly see it um, after adding the gold spray paint. It hit a lot of the um, repair work that I had to do on that crack right there. That had just, it had just kind of caused like a hairline crack here. It didn't go through the jar it just kind of um, on the detail work part of it. All right, so there we go. And um, when this is done, it'll be time to antique with the India ink. All right, so I finished my first flower on the jar. I really like how it looks. And I'm gonna keep going and doing all the flowers. And then when I'm done with those, I can decide if I'm gonna do the slip designs in the same red, um, which will look more traditional, like the embroidery on Poyetas or if I'm going to do it in another color, like green, just to make it look more floral. Okay. So. All right, so I finished um, with all of the red detail work, and I decided to do all of the work with red so that it would look more like the poyetas. And um, once this is all dry, I'll antique it and the lid with some India ink, and then um, the last step will be just a protective clear spray, um, and then this one will be done. All right, I'm gonna start antiquing my jar. So I have just some regular India ink right here. And then I have um, a palette so I can mix different strengths of a shade to antique with so that if I want some areas lighter or darker and some water. And then I have um, one brush for dabbing the ink on and one brush for taking it off. So what I'm doing here is I am just watering down some India ink to start with. And I'm gonna start with this lid um, so that I can kind of get used to it where there's none of the detail work that I have to worry about. And if I make a big mistake, um, I can always just spray paint over this. So it's a little bit nice to have that to start with. And so you can kind of see I've got some India ink now and then I'm taking my dry brush and I'm just kind of doing like a stippling effect and it's slowly getting a little bit more rustic looking. I don't want to leave any spots too terribly dark. I don't want it to look black. I just want it to look more antique um, than the spray allowed for. So there is the top of the lid. And I'm going to go ahead and um, do the sides and the bottom even though they're not as seen um, just so the whole piece looks finished. And you can see I don't necessarily put any ink everywhere. I just choose spots around. And then that way with the dry brush, it's easier 
to spread it around and pick it up and get uneven texture because that's really what you're going for with this antique look is for it to be uneven. If it looks too smooth and uniform, um, then it, the technique doesn't look as good. It looks just a little bit too planned. All right, so the lid is done and now I'm gonna do the jar. So same technique, just kind of dabbing some of this water down in the ink around, even on top of the red designs. And then taking the dry brush and just distressing it a little bit more. So you can see here, this is not distressed. And then this area here is distressed. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. So I'm gonna finish this up and then give it a clear glaze and then I'm all finished.